program. And um, then I'll have the rest of the directions for you then at the next meeting. If you look at the directions, you'll see that I've got all kinds of photography. I took pictures so that it would help and you were referring back. Um, you would have the picture to look at sort of as a memory jog. Um, and then your kits. So your kits, actually, your, um, are several different pieces, including a tube that opens up and has more stuff for your project inside of it. So I'm going to go over uh, quickly what the supplies are that are in your kit. So we have a beautiful piece of oatmeal linen, medium weight. Um, thank you, Kathy, for pulling and cutting all of these to use for your outside. So this is just for this project. If you go to make it again in the future, you can do any combination of fabric that you want. Then you have your roll, your tied roll. The ties are twill tape that you could use as a tie for your finished project roll. You also have the option of making self ties or using, you know, and ribbons if you would like. But we started you with the kit that has the um, tool tape. Then layered around the roll is a nice piece of fleece that is going to give your um, project roll some body and um, just add to pack, um, protect your projects that'll be inside of it. There's also a piece of broadcloth, and this is going to be your project divider. So this is going to go inside your project roll so that you can layer two different projects and they won't rub against each other. If you have pins in one, hopefully they won't snag the other project. You can do multiple of the um, project dividers. And I do have more of these, which I'll bring for the second part of the program, because that's when we'll be discussing inserting these. So if you want to do two um, separators, you know, you're welcome to come get an extra piece of fabric. Um, so then the, the um, cardboard tube with folded in edges is what's going to be the support piece at the um, head of your project roll. These are really hard to find and you have to buy in a box of 70. Um, one of the things I also found because I had to order it three times is that when you, they tell you you're purchasing one that's 18 and a half inches by one and a half, sometimes they cut it 18 and a half inches to the edge of the fold. Sometimes it's 18 and a half inches from the round tube end to the round tube end, not all the way out to the edge. So then the final tube is 21 and a half inches. So when I ordered it the third time, I ordered the finished length to be 18 and a half inches and they came in at 16 and a half inches. Oh. So our directions will um, instruct you on how to cut your fabric down so it'll work with the new size um, roll. I also, because I had to buy a box of 70, if you enjoy this project and you'd like to make it again, um, I will be selling the remaining rolls at the next meeting for a dollar a piece, and that money will go back into the chapter treasury. So with the um, cardboard tube, if you look at the two ends, one end of the tube has a wider separation. It doesn't fold in tightly. This is the end that you're going to use to open and close. And if you open it up, the things inside are two little snaps and um, piping, mini piping. So um, I'm just going to put that right back in there and close it back up. So the items that you're going to need to provide are your lining fabric, because we provided the batting and we provided the outside fabric. So a lining fabric, as well as a fabric that you want to do for your piping. So in my um, case, 
I did a really cute um, blue check um, piping. And then I have this lovely blue and pink and green floral that's going to go on the inside. Um, so you can see how nice that all looks together. And then I color coordinated my embroidery to go with the floral pattern. Um, so, you know, that's one option you can do. I'm also making another one in which my outside fabric is the blue, all the blue check. And then the floral will be on the inside again. Um, and then the piping will be, I was going to do the blue check, but if I could find something that's pink in my stash, I think that would look a lot more fun. So stay tuned for next month. Um, so let's see, uh, uh, directions, I guess wanted to go over the kit. Now, did anybody have any questions about the kit and the kit supplies? All right. Um, now, did you all come up with some designs that you wanted to um, embroider on your fabric? If you did it, that's fine. But your homework for the next month is to embroider your design on the bottom edge of your fabric. Um, and you can, you have to remember that the tube is only an inch and a half in diameter. So you don't want to do a design that's too large. We're still okay to hold it up. Yep, yep, you want to hold because it up. Because otherwise when it rolls around the tube, it's not, um, it's going to not show in complete way. So you want to keep the height of your design around two inches, two and a half inches, and the width, keep it between four and five inches. And that's in your notes. Um, if you keep it between four and five inches, that gives you a little bit of um, an edge from the piping. And it also uh, makes sure that what you've embroidered isn't hidden on your, under your twill ties. So Lindsay, it has to be horizontal, not vertical then. So let's keep going with the directions and I've yes. got more information about how to place it. I'm sure that. So um, what I did to figure out the center on my, on my project, I centered it on the right side. You wanna do it toward the side, not in the middle. Again, because you don't want it covered by the ties. You can do it on the left side or you can do it on the right side. But what I did to find the center of this side of the fabric was first I pressed my exterior fabric in half and then I lightly touched it with my iron to mark the center fold. Then I took the side I was going to embroider and I folded it in a half again to find that quarter. And I gave it just a little press with my iron. And that marked my center point of the side that I was going to embroider on. So you are going to base your, so your vertical center is going to be on that quarter fold mark. Then you are going to measure up about two and a half inches from the bottom cut edge of your outer fabric to find the horizontal center. So, and you'll just do a little crosshair there on your vertical center. And you'll measure out from your vertical center. If you're gonna do four inches, you mark two inches on either side. So that's what these two marks are. If you're gonna do five inches, you go out um, two and a half inches from either side. In my case, I only did the one flower bouquet and then I looked at it and said, I think it would look a lot prettier if it was balanced with the second flower bouquet. So my design is a little off center, but I'm going to write that off to artistic license. <laughs> so um, you just want to make sure that whatever your design is, that it shows up without being caught up and pulled up 
under fabric when you put the lining on and when you put the piping on and so forth. So um, that, that should answer the questions about um, centering vertically and horizontally. Does that make sense, Joan? Yes, but I had chosen an initial which went up and down. Okay. And that is not acceptable for this because it doesn't go. No, that's all right. No, wait, right, because unless your initial is going to Bigger. be within two inches, yes. it's yes. it would get lost. My initial row was the opposite way it was the length. Right. Because it would get lost mm -hmm. on here. That's so right. I understand. Okay, good. So, um, let's see. Transferring the designs. Everybody has a different way they like to transfer the design. Um, my go-to is the pink washout marker by Styla. It's got a nice um, sharp like roller ball point. This just happens to be the item that I like the best. When I make a mistake, I can just blot it with water. It comes out, do a little dry. Um, and I have, I personally have not had any problems with washing it out. And my projects, there are big gaps between when I have time to work on them. So the pen is in it a very long time. So um, I really, this is, Gail Doan was the one who recommended it to me. And I was like, okay, you know, Gail recommends lots of things. Well, it was life changing. So lasts forever, really holds up well. I have about 10 of them. Don't use it on red fabric. Red? Red. Pink marker on red fabric. Okay. Don't use it on red fabric. I had I had a sew that was Oh my God. And I tested other red fabric. There's something about the red that Okay, so um, we've got soft pencils um, and recommendations were made when we started the um, embroidered flower project that you heavily starch your fabric so that it'll wash out easily. Um, you can use a Frixon pen. I'm not really keen on that, but I know it's worked for some people. I think it tends to come back after you've washed it out, depending on temperatures um, that your fabric is exposed to. Um, and another great idea that I got from Lisa Hawks, Pink Holly Bush, is the Sticky Fabrisol, which is a self-adhesive fabric light water-soluble stabilizer. And you can copy or print with it. So you have a design that you download from the internet and you can print it like on a piece of paper right on to the stabilizer. And you would stick it down. So you're gonna just stick it down on your fabric where you want it to be. You embroider through it and then you soak it and it dissolves and washes away. Um, so that is great. And it's really great, like if you're working for with a dark fabric or red, where it's hard to get, like use the light box to see through, to trace it, um, that you can put your design on these darker colors and embroider it and wash it off. Um, you don't have any residue. So um, I have this up here if anybody wants to come up and like make sure they get the name. Um, and we talked about the placement of the design. Um, and then, so there's a picture on the second page, and of course it's got lots of numbers, but it's just for you to be as a memory jog where I mark the half, um, mark vertical half of the total fabric, and then the quarter mark, and then the size of my um, little design, and uh, my little whoops when I added my artistic license pink flower bundle. So, you know, sometimes it's just fun to go with it. So, you know, just enjoy what you're doing. And that's exactly what I did. So I also used two different strands of floss. On this project, because the linen is light and fine, um, I used two strands of floss. And that gave 
very nice contrast and coverage for both the flowers and for the monogreen. But the blue check is a heavier fabric and I needed more contrast. So um, I used three strands of floss on this. And, um, and you just have to really like take a little sample and to try and see whether you like it with the two strands or the three strands. But it, if it, is it if, if you are working with a heavier cotton, you probably wanna go with three strands. Um, another option is if you like to use floch, you would use one um, piece of floch. Now floch is like two strands of DMC, I believe. Um, and you do not pull that apart. You do not strand it. You just use the thread as it comes right off the skein. Um, an option if you're going to do a monogram is to do a padded satin stitch. So that's just another thought. So as we get into the construction, this project is going to use half inch seams. For everything that is done, it's going to be a half inch seam. And um, you go. When you're measuring, because you're only going to embroider on the legs. Correct. And I have it, but it says to cut it um, 18 by 30. So when you do the half, do you have to compensate for that, that seam allowance? So yes. Then really, so let me keep going. Half again. Let's keep going with the directions. You're sort of jumping ahead. Oh, right. So I wanted everybody to have 18 by 30 to start with. That was back when I ordered my first two sets of mailing tubes. And then when we got my third set, we had to alter them. But I'd already cut the lining and the batting and we had the linen cut, cut at 18 by 30. So it's easy. 20 by 30. I mean, that's what I mean, 20 by 30. So um, I'm on the second page at the bottom. And we do have to alter that um, size of the fabric. You're correct. So on the first page where it says cut the fabric 18 by 30. Yes, I'm sorry, I missed that. So based on a mailing tube that's 16 and a half inches, and that's from point to point, um, you need to cut your Batting lining fabric and outer fabric to 18 inches by 30 inches, correct. So, um, but what, whatever fabric that you, and then from there, whatever the width fabric is that you're going to finally use, you want to do the same, um, marking the half, the marking the quarter, and then finding the center for your design. Would you go to mark the quarter? Because have the seam allowance. So you're going to mark the quarter, a quarter, a half, and a quarter here. And then you're from here, you measure up from the bottom to okay. two. Okay. two okay. No, I'm saying you've got the half there. Right here. So the thing is nine okay. inches. Right. Okay. Half of nine inches would be four, four and a half, but. Right. But you really wouldn't be four and a half because you have, don't you have to have the half inch seam allowance? Oh side. gosh, you're exactly right. Yes. So you'll have to subtract this half of that. Well, you know what? Thank you for pointing that out because I'm going to have to finish the second part of the directions for next month. So I will definitely make sure that that is taken into consideration. Thank you. Okay. That So Susan made a really good point. If we go back to the placement of the design, and I'm looking to get a quarter mark 
we should be folding the fabric without the seam allowance, which will affect where my quarter vertical center is by about a half an inch. So, um, and I will correct that in the directions. So you want to make sure that when you're folding, to find the quarter inch, you fold under the half inch seam allowance so you don't include that in your measurement. Okay. So then going back to, um, so we're gonna get ready to layer our fabric. So we have three different layers. Um, so we were gonna uh, make sure that, you know, all of your fabrics are cut for this project with the 16 and a half inch tube. You have your fabrics cut 18 inches by 30 inches. Um, your, um, Top fabric and your batting um, will be layered together and you can stitch around the outside, just inside the half inch mark, just to make sure that they're together and they're not slipping around because when you're sewing the piping on, they do start to slip around. Um, and you sew from the top of one, okay, good, we're down. You sew from the top of one of the, the opposite short end, the top short end, and you sew all the way around. Um, then you are going to take your piping that you've already made, and you're gonna measure down seven and one eighth inch. And the reason you're measuring down is because that seven and one eighth inch is where your um, casing is going to go that your tube's going to fit into. And you don't want all of the piping caught up in the casing as well. Um, so you start your piping. Now, what I did was I wanted there to be like a nice clean end to where my piping started and ended. So I just turned under the end like a little triangle um, and tucked it under the, um, I pulled out the cord that was inside of it so it wouldn't be too bulky. And I um, folded it under and pinned it down. And then I sewed my piping around using a five groove um, pin duck foot. And when I got to the corner, um, I snipped my corner so my piping would curve around nicely. But before you start sewing your piping down, you want to place it and pin it. And you want to take your ties and you want to put one tie underneath the piping and then along the outer fabric on the center, on the center point. And you're going to put the other tie on top of the piping. Because these are your ties, one's going to go one direction and the other's going to go the other direction. And that way your piping still is laying very nicely and your tie will neatly tie around your project roll. Um, so you uh, basted your, let's see. So the next step was, um, bias strip. So we're going to come back to making the bias and the piping. We're at step four on page three. So once you've sewn the fabric and batting, the outer fabric and batting together, I turned it over and I cut the batting off to a, within an eighth of an inch of the seam allowance. And again, that is going to reduce your bulk. Um, and once I'd done that all the way around, I went back and did my piping and my ties. Um, 
And then turning to page four, um, sewing the piping down. Let's see. And then after you do that, you've got your piping down, your ties have been inserted. This is when you're going to take your um, exterior fabric, I mean, your lining fabric, and you're going to layer the lining fabric. Oops, sorry, I missed it. I missed something. I'm terribly sorry. So with the batting, again, keeping in, in mind the bulk, you want to remove an inch of the batting from the top of the um, well, project roll where the hem and the casing is going to be because you're going to eventually be folding that over and stitching that down and you don't want to have all that bulk at that seam allowance. So you're going to trim an inch off. Does that say that in the direction? Yes. Um, So that's on number four, part B. So we layer the outer fabric in the batting. We base the outer fa fabric and batting, batting together about a half an inch. Um, the batting should be placed one inch below the top edge to reduce bulk when making the tube ca casing. And then you're gonna trim the batting close to the seams. And then once you've done that, you'll start pinning your piping on, and before you stitch the piping on, you're going to um, insert your twill ties and then stitch all that down. Um, so then, now we've got the body done. So you're gonna lay the, the lining, right side of the lining to the right side of the linen. And it's and we're just making like a pillowcase. Um, you're gonna stitch around the three sides. I tend to like to have it so that my um, five group pin tuck foot can ride along the piping so I can get it nice and snug. And if, if we have time, I don't think we like tonight, so we'll do that maybe the next time. Um, but it just rides right along that. It's nice and snug all the way around. Um, and you will start and stop that seven and one eighth inch from the top. Um, of the end where the casing is going to be. And once you've got it sewn down, you'll clip your corners here so that um, just cut it diagonally so you can turn it inside out like a pillowcase. And then next week we'll start with um, making the casing to put the tube in and some of the options that you can do, such as using the snaps on one end of the tube fabric so you can open that up and get to the tube and you can store things in there. Um, the tube's really not big enough for scissors, but you can get like your floss in there, an extra pair of needles, maybe a needle threader. Um, and, uh, or you can opt not to do it at all um, as far as um, having access to get into the tube. That's a personal choice. Um, if you wanted to do larger tubes, you would use the same formula for construction, but you would just base your fabric on the end length of the tube and allow for about an inch um, on either side to accommodate the tube. So you could buy a bigger mailing tube with a larger diameter but you need to be able to measure so that the fabric, you have enough fabric to go around the tube and comfortably, comfortably make a pocket. Um, and some of the larger tubes are nice. Like if you had a big needlepoint project, you know, you could 
make it as long as you want or as short as you want. Um, you can get the tubes that have the plastic cap on the end. So if you wanted to access it, you could put the snaps on and then you'd be able to get to the plastic cap and pull that off. Um, yes. On this one here, yeah. And is the fabric going to come past the how is the end going to look on this one? So the end is it going to be covered? Is that going to be covered at all? The end of the tube? Yeah. So we are going to be making a pocket, um, which will involve, you know, we're making our little pillowcase and we'll flip it inside out. Right. And the we haven't sewn the fabrics together in the top seven and one eighth inch. So what we will be doing is turning it um so that the outer fabric is facing each other and we'll be sewing it up from where the piping is to the corner. You'll have like made a narrow hem here and you'll sew it up, you clip your corner and you'll flip it inside out and it will be finished just like this. Yeah. Source up in there, and how would you do it? Yes, so that's what we're going to learn next week. You want to put a camera on here, please? So, <laughs> we didn't get that on camera. So, for the <laughs> camera, so what we would be doing to make the pocket, we would go to the upper part of the seam, we would have a, a hem so that the raw edge of the interior and the exterior fabric would eventually be sewn down. We will fold the fabric. So the exterior fabric is facing each other. You will fold it down right to where the top of the piping is. And you would sew your half inch seam all the way up. And if you were going to, that's for the side that's going to be encased. And then you would just flip it and turn it inside out. And this would be all encased just like that and sewn shut. But you would see a tiny bit of piping on that edge then, is that correct? Uh, the piping, a little bit of piping would um, be right where the top of the corner starts. Oh, no, the, piping go up. Mm -hmm. the piping doesn't go up. So, so it's not like the video you have. Those are just examples of different project roles. That's not the one we're doing today. Oh, okay. These are she just there. Okay. Right. She has the round plastic cap and she does a bigger tube. And she does uh, make a circle of fabric um, that's padded that she stitches on it, um, but we're not doing that one. So we'll have this corner. Now, if you decide you wanna be able to access it and make a pocket, then we're only gonna sew like half an inch on either of these ends before we flip it. So, you know, when it's like this, we're only gonna sew like a half an inch at the top and a half an inch at the bottom. We're going to press that seam allowance. You can put Velcro, that's a great idea. Um, and then you'll have it come down and you're going to sew your two little snaps to the seam allowance on the inside. So when it's snapped shut, you still have that same finished edge. And then, I mean, skipping ahead. So you have an idea of like where we're going with this. So then you've um, you made your casing, you flip them out. Here, I'll come that work. You're gonna, you know, you have your hem here, you fold it all over, and then you're gonna have fit, you're gonna have placed your tube inside, and your first row of stitching is going to go along the outer edge 
of the casing. And then your second row will go to tighten up the fabric around the tube, but you don't want it super snug because then it'll wear, wear out. Because it's, you know, if you think about it, it's going to be going in and out of a bag, in and out of a basket. So you want there to be a little play in there. Um, but then that's sewn down and you've got your you've got your little project. Your um, and when you sew it down, you're going to capture your project separator fabrics. It's going to be caught under there. So all of that will be caught inside of it. And then when it's done, you'll be all set to you know, start layering your projects in. So your homework for next week is to do your um, design and your embroidery on the outside of your um, fabric and to prepare your piping um, to put on the outside of your fabric. Um, and if you have time, add your piping to and twill ties or whichever ties that you decide you want to go with and add that to your outer um, sandwich, the batting, the piping, and the outer fabric. So that would be the goal for next month. I know life gets in the way, but we got to have goals. And so that would be your goal for next month would be to have the piping made you can put your embroidery design on and stitch it. Um, remember, we're just talking about a small area for your embroidery design. Um, it's supposed to be something for you to enjoy. So don't, you know, enjoy the process, enjoy what you're doing. Um, and if you have time, add the piping and the twill tape. So, um, this is just the other fabric here, just so you can see the heavier fabric. And I know I jumped around, I'm sorry. It's like, I've been thinking about it so much that I just was ready to birth to, to tell you about it. So, um, so I do have, well, we've got about 15 minutes. I do have my sewing machine. I can show you how I make piping. Um, using the five group foot. Is that a new concept to anybody or? Okay, well then. Okay, well, I'd be happy to. I thought it was a game changer because I'd been trying to use a zipper foot and was always so frustrated because I couldn't get the needle close enough to the piping and it just always looked kind of bulky and sloppy. And it just looks so nice when you're able to get to stitch closely. Joan, come on up if you want to see something. Um, do you want to set up I'll set up my sheet, but I do have some resources on the last page. And um, there are some links to other type of project keepers. There's a link to the lady whose project that I was trying to emulate. Her name is Meredith Spradley and she's super clever and she's made 300 of them. Um, her daughter-in-law runs a needlepoint business and they've been selling these with little um, sewing utility bags and needle um, cases um, on Etsy. And she usually makes them out of Liberty fabric or vintage linens that she gets when she travels overseas. So the link for, um, let's see, her Instagram site is on there. And then uh, Karen Jablonski um, of Avery Claire, she has one and she did email me her directions. Um, it was one paragraph. So I decided to keep moving on. Um, there's a couple of YouTube videos. Um, so it really was interesting. A couple of the processes have a lot of glue involved and it's super messy, super messy. And it's a lot of glue. It was like a half of a tube that was this big of a lot of glue. Um, cutting bias, there's lots of different ways. You know, I always did it the old fashioned way where you 
fold your fabric on the diagonal and then you take your ruler and you're measuring, measuring, measuring. Well, there's so many different ways of folding your fabric so that you can make less cuts and get more bias. There's ways of cutting your fabric and sewing it back together. So then you can make it two and just cut continuous bias instead of having all the little seams that you're stitching together. Um, I am not confident enough yet to try some of the um, folding um, and folding again processes. So I just did it my old way, which is just measuring it and cutting it as I go. Yes. Do you have the ruler and the cells tightening, yeah. tightening, binding, or whatever? It has a groove in it that you, you put the, the, the two, it's like, sisters, yeah, the twisted sisters sister or something. Yeah, like. the binding cord's got a groove in it that you lay on top of your binding and then you cut it and then put quarter in, whatever. Well, that's for getting the seam allowance, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, where you yeah. put the, you've yeah, actually you made the piping. And your fabric's right. wider than what you want it to be to bind. Right. This trims it to where you want it to be. Right. The, so in this yeah. case, I cut the um, bias at, I think, one and a quarter inches. And so when I folded it and made the piping, it came out with a half inch seam allowance without oh. having to do any other cutting. Um, the, uh, there was a smuggle along recently with volunteers which discussed piping, mm -hmm. and it's still on the uh, Sangha website under education. Well, that's fantastic. I'm going to make a note. Yeah, it, she had you make a little thread catcher, but she does how she makes it and the measurements that you don't have to use the ruler and using the five, um, you know, the five years, the ten times foot and other. It's, so if you're uh, if you're typing, if you're not real confident with your typing, check it out. Oh, well, let's get the machine out. <laughs> the biggest problem you'd be getting it, you know, so that I don't have to piece it. Well, that's I'm not there yet, but um, she never got back to me, but I have extra tips. Yeah, yeah, I don't see where you And then eventually, this that's what I wanted to know. This about one sheet, this and talk away. And that's on the soccer website? Yes. Okay. Smock along. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, I belong. <laughs> I have many, many things I could be using piping on. I just don't know how to do it. So, so, 